This video was brought to you by Nebula. As we get closer to the election, many of the political parties in contention are keen to demonstrate to the public that they have a chance of winning and that your vote wouldn't be wasted with them. Some parties are better at this than others, with smaller parties often finding it quite hard to get past this hurdle. Reform UK is a party we generally assume would struggle with this. However, in recent weeks, their polling has started to tick upwards, and they're now level with the Lib Dems at around 11%. Some are also expecting that their key player, Nigel Farage, may even announce that he's going to stand for the party in the election, and that this could push Reform's polling up even further. If this were to happen, then Reform's polling could even converge with Tory polling, which would cause some pretty significant speculation about how long the Tory party has left as a major party in the UK. In fact, this is something that Farage has already stated he thinks is possible. They've been around since 1834. They're now facing a possible extinction event, and they know it. I don't know what the outcome of all of this is going to be, but we do, for the first time ever, uh, think it's possible to replace them. So in this video, we're going to look into this by first looking at whether there's a historical precedent for this, and then looking into whether it's likely that reform will actually replace the Tories. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, there are two events worth looking at that demonstrate that a smaller challenger party can usurp a larger, more established one. The rise of the Reform Party in Canada in 1993 and the rise of the SDP in the UK in 1983. Let's start with Canada. Essentially, the well-established right-wing party in Canada at the time was the Progressive Conservatives, a party that was just coming to the end of its second term in 1993. They were, though, deeply unpopular thanks to the failure of the Meech Lake Accord and the Charlottetown Accord, both attempts to get Quebec to endorse the Canadian Constitution. As such, the Progressive Conservatives experienced a push from both the left in the form of the sovereigntist Bloc Québécois and from the right in the form of the Reform Party. The Reform Party was a populist party and attacked the Progressive Conservatives for putting taxes up and their support for socially progressive causes. Their leader, Preston Manning, was also hugely popular with the public. Now, the Liberal Party ended up winning the election, with Bloc Québécois becoming the official opposition. More interesting for this video though, the Progressive Conservatives were reduced to a mere two seats, down from the 154 they won in the previous election. They were all but wiped out, and never recovered from this defeat. Reform on the other hand went from a single seat in the previous election up to 52 seats, and actually went up to 60 seats in the 1997 election, becoming the second largest party. In essence, they had killed the Progressive Conservatives. Now, while this success didn't last for long, reform actually merged with the Progressive Conservatives in 2000, it does demonstrate that an insurgent right-wing party can bring down a larger, more established one and realign the political system. The question is, though, whether this could happen in the UK. Now, while this specific form of realignment hasn't happened in the UK recently, there was an instance of a smaller party almost killing the Labour Party in the early 1980s. The then Labour Party leader, Michael Foote, dragged the Labour Party further to the left, which irked the centre-left of his party, who, in 1981, broke away and formed the Social Democratic Party, or SDP. The SDP then stood in the 1983 general election, forming an electoral alliance with the Liberal Party. The Lib-SDP alliance achieved 25.4% of the vote share, only 2% behind the Labour Party. Now, the nature of the first-past-the-post voting system and the fact that Labour retained Scotland as an electoral base meant that the Labour Party achieved 209 seats and the Lib-SDP alliance achieved only 23. Now, while the SDP didn't achieve power or cause a realignment of the party structure of the UK, they did force the Labour Party to drag itself back to the centre ground. Had the SDP concentrated their vote slightly better, or had Labour lost Scotland, this election could have been truly devastating for them, and could have consigned the party to the back benches, or even out of Parliament for even longer. The point is that while a smaller challenger party has not yet killed off a major party, 1983 shows that it's at least possible. 
So let's move on and take a look at whether the Reform Party could be the ones to end the Conservatives' almost 200 years at the forefront of British politics. Now, Nigel Farage clearly seems to think that there's a contingent of the Conservative Party that are as right-wing as he is, and it seems he's been trying to woo them for some time now. At the Conservative Party conference last year, Farage was seen buddying up to and dancing with Priti Patel and other members of the right-wing faction within the party. And only last week, Farage was spotted at the conference event for the newly formed Popular Conservatives, who count among their ranks people such as Liz Truss and Jacob Rees-Mogg. It seems then that Farage hopes that he can win over these members in the event that reform does well in the 2024 general election. As we mentioned at the start, reform is currently polling at about 12% and has been on an upward trajectory for the last few months now. James Johnson, co-founder of the polling company JL Partners, has argued that Farage announcing that he's going to come back and lead Reform UK would get them up to about 15% in the poll. This would undoubtedly come from Tory voters and bring both parties very close to one another. However, while Johnson pointed out that Reform would have a much bigger chance of crushing the Tories, he's not saying that they would necessarily get any seats. Similarly, Eleanor Longman Rood, writing for The New European, argues that reform to be influential, they would need to achieve at least 10 seats in Parliament, and that there would need to be a hung Parliament. And she similarly claims that neither of these seem likely. The reason that reform succeeded in killing off the progressive Conservatives in Canada, and the reason that the SDP failed in killing off Labour in the 1980s, is that in the former case, the insurgent party achieved a huge number of seats. And that's because winning votes simply isn't enough. Seats are the name of the game. And while it looks like reform could, in an ideal scenario, win a handful of seats, even this isn't guaranteed. While the success could damage the Tories, it certainly wouldn't kill them off. So perhaps the best that reform can hope for this year is to damage the Tories and push them further right and essentially achieve what the SDP did in the 1980s. As a TLDR viewer, I can pretty confidently say that you're curious about the world around you, keen to know what's really going on, rather than just the general media narrative. And one country where this is particularly interesting is China, where a lot of media coverage can be muddled or misleading. If you want to dive deeper though, I'd recommend Polymatter's incredible series, China Actually, which explores the truth behind the Chinese news, examining the truth about China's one-child policy, why China has no allies, how Chinese censorship really works, and what exactly China's nuclear policy looks like. All in all, it's a brilliantly researched and thoughtful series, and it's exclusively available on our streaming service Nebula. As you know, Nebula is the service that we built with a whole bunch of our creator friends and is home to tons of smart, educational content from all of your favorite creators. The best part is that by signing up, you not only get exclusive series like China Actually, Modern Conflicts from Real Life Law, or The Logistics of X from Wendover Productions, it also includes all of our content totally ad-free and sometimes before it arrives on YouTube. Plus, signing up directly supports TLDR, because by doing so, you contribute to the budgets of these big budget documentaries and help us to grow and expand our ambitions. So if you want to get more superb content and support TLDR, then if you sign up using the link below, you can support us directly and get Nebula for 40% off an annual plan. That's about £2 a month. Thanks for your support and for backing Nebula.